tell you this, they're, they're working hard, they're listening, they're listening to, to basic fundamentals, and it's one thing, Malcolm, he's taking the next step, he's going to be a better football player, now he's using his hands, playing low striking blockers. Josh Former, uh, former he's a freshman, certain thing, you can see the flat, his flash, he flashes, but some things I got to keep pushing him through, being disciplined, not looking in the backfield, doing things the right way, low pass, striking blockers, the fundamentals, they're, they're coming on. I know like Dennis has bounced back a little forth between end and tackle. He's working with you now. He may not kind of look like the traditional tackle, but what is it about him that seems to suit the position so well? He's a tackle to me <laughs> and our staff. But the thing about it, you think about it, last year, Dennis didn't get much work at defensive tackle because we had COVID last spring and came in the fall, opted out and came back and played part of the season. But he's getting better and better. Dennis, you, you know, he's a strong kid, he's quick, he's powerful. 280 pounds. He's, do, he's doing a great job. He's developed into a, a very good run stopper and a pass rusher. How much has Fabian cut weight and get into the best shape of his career here and helped him out? It, it has helped him a lot. I, I was telling him he was 315, 320 first guy. I said, hey, you need to get down about 300, between 300 and 305. I say the biggest thing for a defensive line is condition. How many times can you strike the block and move running to the football? Not with just one time. You know, reps, reps, reps. It has helped them out a lot. I know some of the, the guys who used to play for you say that you would never let defensive tackles get as big as they are today. What is the game changed that way? The game has changed. The guys are bigger, stronger, and faster. And I don't want one, just like you look at Robert Cooper. He's down 330 some pounds. The kid running to the ball, doing things. And, and I tell a kid this you weigh 325 pounds, you run to the ball, you can hustle, you can weigh that. But if you're not doing that, no, you got to drop. And the, the guys, they're working at it. How has Coop looked? Is he embracing any added responsibility kind of as he's getting older? Yes, he is. He's playing a lot harder. You know, I challenge him. Coach Norvell challenge him. Challenge him every day, running to the football. And he's playing hard, he's striking blocks. He's doing the things I want him to do. He's starting to develop into that player we always thought he could be. But just being the 75th anniversary season at, at Florida State, what does it mean to you to be such a big part of one of those 75 years in the memories of happening. Wow, it means a lot, 75th, and, you know, think about it, 33 years of it, and, and it's a blessing to me to be here at Florida State working and pointing to these young men lives. And, and I tell you, I wouldn't want to do it anywhere else, you know, and pointing to these kids' lives, making sure they go to school, they graduate, and be great young men, and to have a chance to go in the NFL if that's fit, but hey, it's, it feels awesome. And, you know, you look at the state, I come in every morning to come to work, I look at it and say, wow, great feeling to be a Florida State. You know, it's really hard, obviously, to, to, to play young on the defensive line. If Josh is able to help you, like, what, what makes you confident he can, he can do that? Josh, well, right? Josh is uh, coming from Corey Fuller. Corey Fuller got that Florida State blood in it. And he's been pushed and proud and stuff. Josh is a tough kid, big kid. He's gotten stronger, he's gotten bigger. You know, it'll be some time this fall where we can put him in there and he can play. I think he, you know, being who he is, a hardworking kid, never talks about it, eager to listen. But hey, and, and you know what? Humility. Josh has humility. I get on him hard, he'll come back. Sometimes he get frustrated, he'll talk to the coach. Why? Why did this happen? And I'll show him. I say, this is why it happened. He wasn't playing low, wasn't using your hand, you stepped into him. Certain things I tell him, but he's willing to listen. How important has the role been of some of those upperclassmen being able to pull guys aside and explain things to them and some of the technical stuff that, that you want them to do? And that's a big role because it's times, you know, work with the ends one day, me and JP, we he's working with the tackles and they're seeing guys that get over there to different techniques. They tell them, they coach them up. I always tell kids, if you can coach the technique, technique and show them how to do it and learn it, then you become a better football player. So, you know, you try to teach them that. With Notre Dame having a lot of new offensive linemen this year, is there still – some of those guys have played, though, before, so do you have an idea of what, they, what they're going to be doing? Notre Dame's a very good football team. You know, people tell me they lost three, four offensive linemen, man. Shoot, they just replaced – they're known to have great offensive linemen, so they're going to be good. 
Let's not fool ourselves. Notre Dame's going to be good, man. You look at all the uh, defensive ends that got added this offseason, guys like Jermaine and Keir. It seems like they, they command a decent amount of attention. What's that do for your guys inside with just the attention they command? We command their attention. We always just got to go out and play football, man. No matter who the man uh, commands attention. Jermaine going to do his job. Keir going to do his job. Cooper. All them guys. Each guy got to do their job. Then let the chips fall in place. Anything else? Perfect.